Good evening. Live from New York, the CC Radio Network is proud to bring you tonight's show, The Rebellious Rev and the Doc, where we talk about religion like you never heard before. There's no evangelist here. Just talk about religion with a twist. So let's get started and have some fun. Welcome our hosts for tonight, The Rebellious Rev and the Doc. That is heaven. That is no hell. That is only this world and its dark reflect. And we do not know in which of the two worlds we are. Good, Good evening, evening, ladies, ladies and, gentlemen, and gentlemen, live from, from Oceanside, Oceanside, New York. It's, it's the, the Rebellious Rev. And, and the Doc. It's, it's Friday night. night. I hope everybody is uh, ready for a nice, I guess, last weekend of the summer. We pray that everybody has a good, had a good summer. And In fact, you know, autumn starts tomorrow. Although, last few days here, which I thought was great, you know, uh, temperatures have been rather cool. Yeah, I, I thought it was Sunday, the, the first day, or the 21st. 21st. That's Sunday. Oh. Today's the 19th. Okay. I stand corrected. Thank, Thank you. you. I just, I just wasn't. I, I just didn't know what happened. I thought. I thought the calendar changed. We, we, we skipped the day. That's all. Anyway, uh, today, today's well. First things. Let me give you a phone number: six four six five nine five three two seven five. And why don't we tell them about today's topic? Today's topic is why do we hate Jews in the United States? Not, not me personally. I'm just saying. Why does in, in fact, fact, not only in the United, United States, States, but basically, basically if you went overseas, you would still find anti-Semitism. Yeah. yeah. Why? It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. sense. In, in the United States, States <coughs> there is uh, hate crimes, and the only people who have that get more hate, hate crimes than Jews are the Muslims. Are the Muslims, and not by much. Now, now mind you, there are hate crimes against every religion. It's, it's just how many there are, the percentage. Well, it just seems that every September, around the high holidays, uh, there's always an increase in desecration of cemeteries by painting swastikas on stones, pushing the stones over, uh, painting anti-Semitic slogans on houses of worship, uh, synagogues, and, you know, you know, for no apparent reason. You know, you know for, for those of us who live in, in, or are blessed to live in New York or Los Angeles, Angeles California, California, places in California, you know, you know uh, we're, we're lucky because, because the percentage, percentage, the Jewish population is so strong and we are, we are in such numbers, numbers that we really don't feel this. But if you travel outside of New York, York you know, you, know, you find, find uh, the further toward Middle America that you go, Rev, that uh, there's more and more anti-Semitism. But the interesting thing is, uh, the hate crimes themselves, the painting of the swatch stickers and all that, is done more in New York and big cities than anywhere else. In New York, it's up again this year. There's been over 80... Uh, Hate, hate crimes, crimes this year. La- at this time, at this time last year, there was only about sixty. Well, you know, uh, I can, uh, you know, uh, report uh, on Temple at Temple University uh, last month. Uh, a student was walking and he was attacked simply for being Jewish. Now you're talking Temple University. You're talking about Philadelphia, okay? Uh, not, not exactly, exactly Middle America, America. not again, exactly a bunch of yahoos, you know? Again, as I said, it happens more in bigger cities than the, than the small towns. Well, but you, but you know, know, my daughter lives in Troy, Ohio. You know, where she lives in Ohio, it's like every other block is honk if you love Jesus. And I remember her relating to me a story that they are around the holidays, Christmas time. You know, you know, the co-workers, co-workers wishing everybody, everybody Merry Christmas, Christmas, Happy New Year, 
and Robin happens to say that, you know, she'll take the Merry Christmas because she loves the holidays, and in that respect, she takes after me because I was always wishing everybody Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. But, but then, then they asked her why, and she said, well, I'm Jewish, and I celebrate Hanukkah. And it's like they looked at her like she had two heads, you know, what's that? Now, you're, now you're talking, talking about the 21st century, century here, ladies and gentlemen, in the United, United States, States, States of America, and people don't know what a what Jewish, Jewish holiday, holiday is. is. I mean, I, I tell you all the Catholic holidays, holidays and, and I am not Catholic, Catholic as you know. know. Well, well, Mark, but that doesn't, that's, that's not a hate crime, that doesn't represent any dislike of the Jews. No, no it's ignorance. ignorance. A lack, a lack of, of education, it's ignorance. A lot of people don't know where... It's, it's only 1.7% of the people in the United States are Jews. So there aren't a lot of them. I mean, you know, there's a concentration over here, there's a co concentration in Florida, and then I guess in the West Coast. But, but the rest of the country, there aren't, there's not a lot of exposure to Jews. So. Hey, listen, I'm not asking people, you know, to, be a, you know, to, to know of every holiday. I'm not even aware of, of almost, I used, I used to, to be, of almost, almost every holiday, holiday okay? okay? But, but, you know, not, not to be able, to, I mean, Kanaka is a big deal, Passover is a big deal. When, when I was a teacher, maybe some, some, some Hindu holidays. I, uh, well, I know what Ramadan is, but that's uh, not Hindu. Muslim, yeah. okay? Um, I don't know. There's as many. It's, it's about 1.6% of the population are Hindus in the United States. So why are you ignorant to, right to that? Same thing. I guess I'm ignorant of that. I'll, 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 so so I'll why, admit to that. And most people are. And you know, why should somebody else know but your religion? There's absolutely no reason. That has nothing to do with what we're discussing, I don't think. Well, well, it has to do with education. I think people have to be better educated in, uh, as far as the... Uh, All right, we have a phone call. Let me grab the call. Good evening, caller. And you are? Hey, my name is Q from Atlanta. Hey, how are you, you? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you both? We're doing good, thank you. I'm glad you had the topic, back. I tried to uh, articulate this uh, to a few people, and I'm glad you just had the example in the last seven seconds of why the energy uh, exists many times in different groups. Let, let me start there with different groups. As a black guy, which I am, if black people do the same thing, they say, well, um, you don't know what uh, Kwanzaa is. Now, only a small percentage of most black Americans even celebrate Kwanzaa. But if I then insult you and your intelligence, picking a fight, basically, because you don't know what Kwanzaa is, and I do it toward another black person, me, a black guy, doing it toward another black person, I'm now, in this person's eye, creating negative energy. And if they run into several other people who tell them, hey, you're, you're unintelligent because you don't know what quantum is. Now, that person's experience of people who practice quantum is rude and arrogant. So, let's just give you an example that happened in the last seven minutes. I mean, seven seconds. One person, you talk about you the guys, you made a statement about something that you believe in, but that may not be the other person's experience. I mean, maybe you know about it, you know, but not, not the experience. Most people that I run into are, who are Jewish then go about the way of trying to insult you because you have a different view of their experience. It's the same thing I've heard all my life with whose experiences were worse, slavery in America or the Jewish Holocaust. Jewish Holocaust people will always try to, in my experience, will always try to insult black people as if you were supposed to be slaves. Ours is 
different because and this type of collective arrogance it was causing many people to look at black people in a bad way and causes uh, white people to be looked in a bad way, whoever you want to be called white, and causes Jewish people to be looked in a bad way. My last point of evidence, when Barack Obama first got elected here in America, you know what I saw all on uh, YouTube from uh, little young people in, in the, uh, Israel? Calling the man a nigger. Several videos. Why would they do that, I said. Me and a bunch of black folk, we, why, why would they, where is that coming from? And to answer your question, I'm going to wrap up. To answer your question is because the Jewish community appears not to care about their own image of Arab toward other groups. Sure, black people got their stuff, they need to clean up, Asian people, Latin people. But Jewish people have this thing where if you pay, if you deal with it, if you, it's like, dude, can y'all chill out? 1946, I look at the Jewish map of Israel at the top of Palestine. Now I look at the 2014 map and they've taken up pretty much all of Palestine. And gone for more. Right after uh, they did this last insurgence, what was that... Uh, some little piece of legislature that the uh, leader uh, passed where he uh, acquired more land right after the last ceasefire. These are the problems. But I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about the facts that I put forth. Mark? I don't, I don't know if... Well, the, well, the Jewish, Jewish people that I know, that I know are certainly, certainly... I don't, I don't think, think they're ignorant, uh, 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 arrogant at all. all. Um, I, know I know that I grew up learning about slavery and learning about equality, equality and uh, the education in Hebrew school and in regular school was that uh, we all deserve respect and we have to learn about each other because we have to respect whatever is different and the differences are generally cultural. Uh, I'm not even talking about religious-wise. Um, Kwanzaa, for example, is a harvest holiday, and in the Jewish religion we have a similar harvest holiday that comes in October, okay, reaping the harvest. I think if we studied all religions, and I, and I have to be honest, honest, I really don't know a lot. I don't, I don't profess to know a lot. Uh, but we'd, we'd find, find that in every religion, religion at some point during the calendar year, holidays, holidays will coincide as far as whether they're harvest, they're harvest holidays or religious holidays. holidays. You, know, you know, as, as far, far as the map, the map of Israel, Israel the only, the only way, way that, that there, there will be, be a possible solution in the, in the Middle East, East as, as far as I'm concerned, is, is if there is a, a, a two-state two solution. Uh, I, am I am not necessarily on the side of the conservative Jews, Jews who feel that because it says in the Bible that this is the promised land, land etc., etc., I think that people have to learn to live together. I think, I think that of Israel, Israelis, uh, Palestinians, and I think that way as far as this country is concerned, that we have to learn to live together. And if you get to know who the other person is, you find that there are very few differences you know, it's you know, very, very interesting. interesting. I was watching MSNBC tonight, and they had Mark Whitaker, who just wrote a book on Bill Cosby. And he quoted Cosby as saying that if people got together and talked openly, they'll find that we have more in common than we have differences. And when I was a teacher, I used to tell my students the same exact thing. If you took five families, white families, and five African-American families in a room,